Hey everyone, I'm Alexandra. Thank you guys for watching this video. It's going to be a little bit different than some of the rest of my videos. I haven't made a video about this topic before because of the visceral reaction that it invokes. Name calling, anger, rage. Quite frankly, the reaction is untenable. But the longer I try to avoid it, the more I feel like I have to address it. That topic is the shape of the earth. So let's not talk about proofs exposing or debunking. What I want to talk about is how the shape of the earth fits into programming. Oh, and maybe you've noticed that I disabled comments for this video. Comments won't change anyone's mind, but they can hurt people's feelings. But don't worry, if you hate me and you hate this video, you can still dislike it. Recently, there's been a wave of propaganda against the Flat Earth Movement. But this is not about information, this is about censorship. This disinfo propaganda campaign is put out by governments and corporations like Disney, other mainstream media institutions, news personality agents, as well as internet influencers like Logan Paul and Shane Dawson, who, by the way, have the same video editor and are part of the same Hollywood studio in LA. This campaign should tell you that the establishment is panicking and are trying desperately to cover up the truth. Otherwise, why would these organizations waste so much time and money? The infection of misinformation is to ensure that real information can no longer be found. If you can't get critical information on a subject, how can you educate yourself? They don't want you to think critically. They want you to repeat what you've seen on the sites that they approve for you. That way, you have no facts, but you still have an unwavering opinion. That should tell you that there's something here that they don't want the public to know. If someone is threatening you, it's from a position of weakness. If you weren't close to the truth, why would they be trying to stop you? After all, six companies own all of the mainstream media. So recently, this mockumentary came out called Flat Earth to the Edge and Back. No, I don't think the Earth is flat. I think that's the dumbest shit I've heard in my life. The entire movie is a joke. No, literally, it's, it's meant to be a joke. It's a profanity-laced parody of people who believe that the Earth is flat, and it's presented as if it should be on Adult Swim. Oh, wait, yeah, they've already done that with the whole craft punk political party thing, making fun of Flat Earthers. One of Logan Paul's friends claims to be a flat earther and tries to convince Logan that the earth's flat. The whole movie makes fun of flat earth while promoting the flat earth society in subtle ways. Now the flat earth society is owned by the cabal and spreads disinformation. It was put in place to stop or confuse people who wanted to learn more. Now if you don't know who Logan Paul is, Wildly popular on YouTube with millions of kids watching all of his videos, endorsement deals from companies like Pepsi and HBO. He's well known on YouTube for his pranks. Well, other than filming a dead body and being generally disrespectful, he's known for pranks. His brother Jake Paul was on the Disney Channel, and the two were seen quite often together. If you know the history of the Disney dynasty, this should start to make more sense. Disney, along with many other things, such as being a programming site, has a long record of producing monarch victims. Just one recent example is Dove Cameron, who became famous on Disney's Live and Maddie, Another depiction of splitting a personality on camera like Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana. Dove tweets family-friendly things like, You are such an idiot, to Donald Trump. She posts photos like this, Demon confirmed. And of course, like this. Her whole beta programming has been manifesting in her obsession with goddess worship. ABC's Nightline had a segment on Logan Paul's mockumentary. However, they presented it as if it was an authoritative piece. In the age of misinformation, conspiracies, myths, and outright lies can live a long life on social media. Take, for example, those who believe the Earth is flat. Mix that with YouTube bad boy Logan Paul, who made a controversial mockumentary about the flat Earth movement, and suddenly the truth gets lost. Okay, now let's get one thing straight. The Earth is round. You know it, I know it, Logan Paul knows it. The bandwagon fallacy. The popularity of an idea doesn't determine its truth. Most of us were subjects to the same indoctrination via school, culture, and media, so it's likely we believe things that are wrong. Explain to me what kind of space YouTube is for mistruths. It's ground zero. If you were to ask me why the Earth is round, the simple answer would be gravity. Gravity. You have to rely on people to be independently smart enough to say this seems ridiculous and to seek out information from sources that are, are verifiable and trustworthy. By the way, Disney owns ABC. Disney is pushing this agenda, and did so in a way to present it to the younger generation, so that they may reject this idea before they even question their own beliefs. Why so desperate? And more than 8 billion fans from around the world are expected to tune in to the wildly successful show. Here's our Lisa Guerrero. There's never been a global television event. Global television event. Like Game of Thrones. 
the numbers are huge because Game of Thrones is not just HBO's biggest hit ever, but because it's also going to be shown in 170 countries around the world. In this globally connected world in which we live, HBO has come up with a unique way of avoiding spoilers. When there's not a logical reason for an action, you should start to question it. When there's a physiological reaction, like anger or aggression, you should also start to question it. The internet is a breeding ground for comments like this. And of course, the point of this Nightline segment was to praise Logan and scare the viewers about controversial videos on YouTube. Much like the one you're watching right now. You know, things like this are an unacceptable cancer. Yet this person who films a dead body isn't. Or maybe the fact YouTube remained silent during the phenomenon of watching someone slowly kill themselves in front of thousands of horrified viewers. But sharing views different from the norm or that deviate from the script is unjustifiably evil. This is also not the first time that a Disney victim trolled people on the internet. Of course, this ruined Cole Sprouse's career, but Logan goes untouched. Even Stevens is a classic Disney Channel show that apparently taught a lot of kids when we went to the moon. 1969. Not a year before or after. Oh, we went to the moon in 1969. Cardi B singing about the moon. These are a few other common logical fallacies regarding the flat earth movement. A common statement, scientists say, that is an appeal to authority fallacy. Just because someone has a degree and or notoriety does not mean what they say is true. The more well known they are, the more likely they are to be a puppet of the elite. How could all space agencies lie? This is an example of personal incredulity. When you're naive and gullible, it's hard to believe people lie. But your lack of understanding doesn't change the facts. The statement is easily answered once you realize that all space agencies are owned by the same generational families. The same ones that own the media, agriculture, the medical institutions, and so on. Now someone says, Earth is not an accelerating disk. Or ask why we don't fall off the edge, or it can't be flat because there are mountains. This is called a straw man argument. Real flat earthers don't say Earth is a disk accelerating upwards. That's part of a misinformation campaign the statement maker has correctly parroted. Prove the Earth is flat. This is the burden of proof. The burden of proof lies with the one making the claim. Flat Earth is not a claim. It is an observation. Examples of claims include Earth is spinning or Earth is a globe. Anyway, the network or the establishment goes by many names. It's made up of generational families in power who represent the hidden hand throughout history. The Washington establishment and the financial and media corporations that fund it exist for only one reason, to protect and enrich itself. The Clinton machine is at the center of this power set. We've seen this firsthand in the WikiLeaks documents in which Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty in order to enrich these global financial powers her special interest friends and her donors. The most powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. The Clintons are criminals, remember that. This is well documented, and the establishment that protects them has engaged in a massive cover-up of widespread criminal activity at the State Department and the Clinton Foundation in order to keep the Clintons in power. He tells you who the establishment is. He also uses the word global and the video shows a few images of the globe. You know it, they know it, I know it, and pretty much the whole world knows it. Yes, Trump attacks the cabal in this video, but the alliance depends on the continuation of this lie as well. Not only to keep their faith and hope in exploring space, but their belief system, like the New Age, incorporates extraterrestrials and planets. So the globe is a necessary part of programming any false belief system. When you get down to the micro levels of all of these organizations, like NASA or observatories, they run very well or the lies hold themselves up. 
These institutions are compartmentalized like H.H. H. Holmes's hotel. No one has the full picture. If you haven't already, I suggest researching Operation Bloodstone or Paperclip and the origins of NASA. Back to the network or the establishment. They enforce the propagation of disinformation to influence the masses to self-enforce the narrative or belief systems that shape our reality. An agent of influence is someone who might be unwitting, under mind control, or ideologically motivated to use their positions of influence to sway the minds of others. Examples of agents of influence are anchormen on TV, journalists, academics quoted by the media, celebrities, some politicians, and of course, internet influencers. Many of them are related. Oftentimes, I find the people that reject the Flat Earth model don't even know what they're rejecting. Most don't even understand the Flat Earth model. They assume something like this. Still part of the heliocentric model of spherical planets, just replace the Earth with a cracker. That's ridiculous, and not at all what any Flat Earther knows. Instead, this is what our ancestors knew. And according to a Masonic Bible, Egyptians thought the shape of the world was an oblong square. Helios was the titan god of the sun, a guardian of oaths and the god of sight. He dwelt in a golden palace in the river Oceanus, at the far ends of the earth, from which he emerged each dawn, crowned with the aureole of the sun, driving a chariot drawn by four winged steeds. Helios was depicted as a handsome, usually beardless man clothed in purple robes. Helios was identified with several other gods of fire and light, such as Apollo. The heliocentric model of the solar system, also called the Copernican model, is a sun-centered model. Heliocentrism positions the sun in the center of the solar system, motionless, with Earth and the other planets rotating around it in circular paths modified by epicycles and at uniform speeds. Nicholas Copernicus was a Polish astronomer, mathematician, and a Catholic cleric. Alchemy and hermetic magic features in the origins of the scientific revolution. Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, and Newton were all interested in alchemic ideas and hermetic principles. The Royal Society features as ground zero for the birth of modern science. Virtually all the Royal Society's founding members were Freemasons. One could reasonably argue that the Royal Society itself, at least in its inception, was a Masonic institution. One cannot be a Freemason if they're an atheist. They must believe in a god, a goddess, or some higher entity, because Freemason is part of the mystery religions. The people who laid the framework for science were religious. Remember how these occultists seek first the light, or to be given sight, which is, of course, what Helios is the god of. The ones who brought about the literal planetary revolution were all members of one of the largest and oldest secret societies in existence. This is not a coincidence but proof of organized collusion in creating and maintaining this generational lie. The sun is revered in the world's religions, such as how the Druids celebrate the rebirth of the sun during the winter solstice. So, so let's give a rousing cheer for the returning sun god. Yeah! Astrology is the study of the movement and relative positions of celestial bodies interpreted as having an influence on human affairs in the natural world. Egyptian astrology is very different than modern day astrology. Each constellation represented a god. The first book of Enoch in chapter 8 tells us that the fallen angel Barakael is the one that taught men astrology, while Kokobel taught humans the constellations. The Kabbalistic tree of life is the knowledge of good and evil. Exoterically, each circle on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life constitutes an aspect of God, such as compassion, beauty, or discernment, while an eleventh circle, shown with dotted lines usually, shows the place of knowledge. And all high-level occultists know this. Just like the light Luciferians teach the kingdom of God is literally within us, then the planets must be as well. Stellar worship is tied to the heliocentric religion. In my opinion, the idea of planets can be thought of as dimensional, not physical. And what we're taught as being physical, solid bodies, as the planets in the sky, the Bible calls the wandering stars, made of light and plasma. Interestingly, the Book of Enoch warns of the creation of the heliocentric religion. Chapter 80 says, And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. 
and the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them. The lie of the heliocentric religion is right here and they shall be altered from all their ways. Yea, they shall err and take them to be gods, and evil shall be multiplied upon them. The planets are all named after gods. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible describes the earth as flat and stationary. In Joshua 10:12, Joshua asked God to make the sun and moon stand still, not the earth. He knew the earth was stationary. He needed more time to defeat the Amorites, described in Amos 2:9 as giants. Yet destroyed I the Amorites before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. The globe reduces us to a speck of dust in an infinite universe where we have no importance. The stationary plane reveals the unique creation of Yahweh. People reject inconvenient truth because it requires change. It's difficult to accept the reality of our world when we've been lied to since childhood. Just in your everyday life, begin to notice the symbolism around children. Like this Aleve commercial. Everybody can be a winner like Aldi. Their products have won over 400 awards for quality. Kind of like Cooper's solar system. We do great too. Not Aldi great, but regular great. What's great is this is ridiculous. Even adults think wearing NASA clothing makes them look cool, hip, or smart. Look at my pants with the eyes in your face. My legs are covered in outdoor space. Space pants. Children do not question authority. Teachers in public schools must teach what they're instructed to, or risk losing their job. Thus continuing the cycle of lies. When a trusted adult teaches a child a lie, they begin to build their worldview on top of it. The reason public schools teach what they do is because John D. Rockefeller Sr. started public education in the U.S. in 1907. But Rockefeller wasn't only interested in public schools. He funded universities, medical schools, and natural science schools, too. People in denial of a world of universal despotism often ask, wouldn't everyone have to be in on it? Why would they lie? Why do adults lie to their children about Santa Claus? Because it's tradition. The purpose of tradition is to let every generation gain the same knowledge and experiences as the ones before it. A lie agreed upon by a community becomes a cage. The children who know Santa is not real become the outsiders, because the lie of Santa is agreed upon. Everyone participates, so things go smoothly. But if children knew that Santa did not exist, yet they still got the things that they asked for, maybe they would be more likely to respect their parents and be grateful for the things that they had. But even better, do away with the lie of Christmas and stop making innocent children celebrate pagan festivals like Saturnalia and Yule altogether. Without tradition, the power of the lie would die out. Another reason people like to keep these lies around is because it makes them feel good. And the way that they feel is more important than the truth. Global news, global warming, golden globes. The lies have been passed down for generations and have become accepted. But a lie doesn't become true just because a lot of people believe in it. Universal Pictures, owned by NBC Universal and Comcast, had a logo from the 1920s that shows a globe, which is about 40 years before we went to the moon, so to speak, and got the first, quote, picture from Apollo 11. But their logo has always been a sphere of some sort. However, the first version wasn't exactly meant to be Earth. You see, it's Saturn. The modern version still has the logo in the same placement as Saturn's rings. Therefore, this isn't exactly Earth. This is Saturn. And speaking of Apollo 11, here's a clip that shows how they came up with the first picture of Earth. Here they remove part of the crescent insert. Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Here is the slate for the 19th of July and the same shot of trickery on the 19th of July. And then the 20th, and the same misleading shot on the 20th. Later that evening, they were said to be walking on the moon. How can this be when they were in Earth orbit only nine hours earlier, and the moon is some three days journey away? Sorcery is the unnatural manipulation of forces that are unseen with a focus on mind control and the manipulation of the body's physiology. Groups that form the network or organizations practicing trauma-based mind control are the backbone of the corrupt world we live in. And it's interesting to note some of the centers that figure into this programming. Christian Fred Kleinick was national director of NASA during the moon flights when lots of mind control programming was going on. 
and it was being done by both the Masonic Lodges and NASA. Kalinick was not only director of NASA, but the secretary general of the Scottish Rite, 33 degrees of Freemasonry. I find this to be one of the biggest differences between globe believers and flat earth believers. Those who cannot accept that there might be powerful generational families who have maneuvered themselves into positions of power and are influencing the course of history throughout countless forms of manipulation, one of which is psychological. Most people are unaware of how powerful the establishment is. As long as they don't question their reality, they will never appreciate how limited their freedom of thought truly is. It's only when they try to go against the current that they find out how powerful the establishment can be. It sets up controlled opposition to the system, like the propaganda around the Flat Earth Movement. Controlled opposition gives people a chance to vent their anger, but doesn't threaten their control. Because as long as it's us versus each other, instead of us versus them, their power is not threatened. Who would want to carry out mind control? One category are the groups that use the Kabbalah. This, this, and this are all based on the Kabbalah, and no, none of these organizations are separate. Groups like the Templars and the Freemasons practiced archaeoastronomy, or the ancient practice of aligning buildings with celestial bodies. The majority of groups that worship the sun, moon, or stars follow the Kabbalah. Esoterically, the creation of mind control zombies, called Golem, was the highest goal of the Kabbalah. Kabbalists are similar to Freemasons. They build mind control programs and are skilled in subliminal messaging and manifestation through subliminal symbols, phrases, or numbers. They use forms of numerology and geometry to construct their mind control spells. Kabbalists are usually trained in a form of astronomy and sometimes in demonology. Alchemy is about manipulating the physiology. They specialize in creating mental spells that trigger parts of the physiology. The influential occultist Paul Foster Case said, Every true magician knows that all his practice has a mathematical, geometrical basis. By the aid of occult geometry, he has traced nature to her concealed recesses. He uses geometrical formula and diagrams in his practical work. The people who founded the heliocentric religion were more than familiar with this type of work. Jesuits use destructive mind control. An example of a Jesuit spell would be, you are worm food when you die. Or, there is no afterlife. When you die, that's it. They create very sadistic and depraved psychological constructs intended to crush the spirit. A study of astronomers from the 16th through the 21st century shows that the leading astronomers were also Jesuit priests. Even the Gregorian calendar, the one we use today, was created by Jesuit astronomer Christopher Clavius. They will never see it as such, but cosmology was a religion created for and practiced by atheists. More often than not, those who defend the globe are those who have already had their spirits crushed. And God's not real when you die, you're dead. An atheist is a person who disbelieves or lacks belief in the existence of God, a creator, or a higher power. Why would an atheist believe in the Big Bang Theory but not believe in God? This person says, because the Big Bang Theory is backed by objective evidence and God is not. The belief in the Big Bang Theory is not the same as the belief in God. The former is a reasonable assumption until we find evidence for it to be wrong. The latter is blind faith. Father Georges Lemaitre, who uh, discovered the, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, and by the way, Nicholas Copernicus was a Catholic cleric. He had minor orders and was a canon lawyer. And, and of course, you know, the, uh, Pope Paul III uh, was, uh, you know, the person to whom Nicholas Copernicus dedicated his book on the heliocentric solar system. So um, the, the church was never against the heliocentric universe. Atheists reject the spiritual domain. They believe the earth is governed by physical laws that came from nowhere for no reason. Therefore, no spiritual laws govern their behavior or morality either. Living in this kind of ignorance only leads the world towards more chaos. Evidence suggesting we are only material is very slim. Modern science, or exoteric scientism, does not have all the answers because true science has been occulted. The occult has many more answers and explanations than people might be aware of. For example, John Gittinger designed the occulted PAS, or Personality Assessment System. It's a method to evaluate human behavior and predict future behavior. The PAS is based on the ability to differentiate different types of people. Gittinger discovered that genetic-based differences exist in people, which is one of the basis for monarch programming. And this is why his work was not accepted by mainstream exoteric psychology. That information needed to remain occulted. Another example is when exoteric scientism tells you that memory loss is caused by dementia or concussions. They say things like that are evidence that memory is stored in the brain. I would argue that a broken cell phone isn't going to get a signal. When you use your phone and it picks up a signal, that does not mean that the signal is stored in the phone. It's just the hardware to access the frequencies. Like a computer, the internet is not contained within your laptop. Your laptop accesses the internet. 
the definition of exoteric. It is intended for or likely to be understood by the general public. Exo, external. Esoteric is intended or likely to be understood by a select few or an inside group, an inner circle. These two spheres of reality can apply to almost anything. Exoteric, esoteric. For example, Q gives a form of slightly esoteric information. And take religions. Religious dogmas, rituals, and symbolism is exoteric and designed to hold people back from an accurate picture of the religion they practice. To the outside, the exoteric adherence to the religion of Chaldaism, which is a monotheistic syncretic religion whose name means highest power or highest lord. The purpose of Chaldaism is to unite the traditions of all religions in the world. Esoterically, look familiar? Another way to explain the difference between exoteric and esoteric is esoteric knowledge is people who know the truth. Exoteric knowledge is for people who are not important enough to know the truth. With increased knowledge comes increased power. Anyway, atheists. They have given their power over to their god, the state, on a fully exoteric level. Atheists are religious, and they worship wholeheartedly at the most dangerous religion on earth, the government. State-funded science is their god, and they will believe anything these people teach them who are agents of the occultists who own the governments. Atheism is and always has been a path to spiritual death, which is why the governments and Lucifer love when it infects the minds of the people, thus continuing the cycle that esoteric information is never to be shared with the masses. After all, how can you destroy an establishment by still supporting one of its pillars? The mystery schools viewed atheists as completely unable to learn their secrets. Occultists believe that knowledge should be hidden and held by a select few. Satanists, Luciferians, dark occultists, and light occultists are like ancient psychologists who hold and wield information to exploit those who remain ignorant of it. The globe is mental insurance that there is no creator. However, there is no creator but Lucifer. Since he created this world, if the earth is flat, Yahweh God told the truth. That is why I feel like this topic is a salvation issue, even though those who claim to call themselves Christian often argue that it is not. It comes down to who do you believe, man or God. There are two worlds, two versions of reality, the globe and all within it, the flat earth and all within it. I've always thought of flat earth to be like an eject button from the matrix, the fastest form of the red pill. Because once you're free from the globe, almost all of their lies begin to fall apart. To me, what the globe is, is showing you that this is Lucifer's world. He can't show you it's flat. He didn't create that. After all, there is no truth found in him. So the people who believe in the globe and love things in the globe matrix are his, in his world. After all, Lucifer's highest goal is to become God. And when your entire world is based on his lies, he is your God. Along with the other fallen angels in the Nephilim, they achieve this through trauma, Hegelian dialectics, and psychological terrorism. At least with the globe, no one ever has complete knowledge, so they're still slaves to his lies. First Timothy calls this type of idea, science so-called. When you're met with anger and hate and belittled for not believing a lie, know that you're not pushing back against logic, you're pushing back against programming. The reason there's such a violent reaction to the Flat Earth Movement is because the brain uses its framework or its worldview in which to place new incoming information. Education, television, and society control how people's framework of knowledge is built. And these frameworks are built to exclude major truths because they would expose how the establishment is controlling people. The mind puts up a fence to stop any non-approved information from coming in that doesn't fit its accepted concept of truth. Much of this fence is fear-based. That's why propaganda like this acts as a sealant to make sure the programming doesn't fade. And then there are truthers that claim that Flat Earth is a PSYOP, or a psychological operation. But by definition, a PSYOP is changing people's minds not through persuasion, but through informational dominance, a set of techniques that includes rumor, disinformation, and fake news. By its very definition, then, the only PSYOP is this. You might ask, what about aliens? What about people claiming to be abducted by aliens? I would suggest one look into the similarities between satanic ritual abuse and alien abductees. In my opinion, alien abductees are victims of trauma-based mind control, and the many of them have been taken to underground facilities for programming, and possibly made to believe that they were on a different planet, or were in contact with extraterrestrial beings. For example, Groom Lake, also called Dreamland, and most famously called Area 51, 
has massive underground facilities in and around the area used for genetic research. Another example of a programming facility is Mount Shasta in California. It has programming to make people think that they can communicate with aliens. This is also used as a reprogramming center. Also Mount Shasta, California, where they train uh, military special forces and with mind control, which is where I had seen uh, George Bush Jr. being programmed and trained and groomed as well. Monarch programming is just a sophisticated application of what is done to humanity on a large scale. Lucifer enslaves people through trauma-based control. Anyone who steps outside of the lies or of the programming is attacked. This world has exchanged truth for lies, which is why when you come to certain people with the truth, they reject it. Their world's foundation cannot handle it. That's why you have to build your foundation on solid ground, on the truth. If the truth sets people free, then by definition, slavery means to not have the truth. All lies lead to slavery. John 8:32 says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yahusha, or Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Truth will always live in people's hearts. That is why it is so important for the adversaries to build a framework of thorns around that core truth, to prevent people from ever reaching it, or for being too scared to even try. Atheists, agnostics, Christians, mono and polytheistic religions can all be for or against the flat earth. When you get down to it, the only difference in those who believe the earth is flat and those who do not is the understanding that the evil few have maneuvered their way into power over the many. It is time to take back your power and break free from these generational lies. Some people feel, if I stay with the crowd, then I'm safe. Recognize this is rooted in fear, and more specifically, the fear of death. Death comes from Lucifer. Again, Yahusha is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're still watching this, thank you for taking the time to do so. I hope what I had to say was useful in some way to you. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.